And now for the radio program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program. The mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because you know who's guilty. You see his every move. You know his complete plan. Even his innermost thoughts. Yet the final curtain always brings a startling surprise. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's the whistler for the tops in entertainment. And for the tops in gasoline quality, it's signal. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly independent signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Small Town Girl. The young man was tall, tanned, and impressive. There wasn't a guest at Mrs. Parkford Smith's cocktail party who would deny that his presence had livened the affair considerably. The hostess especially appreciated Mr. Derek Marlowe, his gentle flattery and his absurdly amusing story. Oh, Mr. Marlowe! Derek, you knew that isn't true. It couldn't have happened that way. Oh, but it did, Smithy. And the story was a rage on the continent. <laughs> Bob Leland was there. You remember, don't you, Bob? Yes, yes, Derek, I remember. You and Bob must have had some rare old times together during your student days. Oh, we did. We uh, we did. We were always thinking of ways to uh, break loose. Hey, Bob? Yes, yes, we were. Now, Bob, in the interest of Anglo-American relations, you should have introduced us all to Derek a long time ago. Sorry, Mrs. Oh, it's all right, dear. We've made up for lost time. (laughs) You are going to have to speak to him, though, Bob? Speak to him? Yes. I resent the fact that he hasn't let any of us in on his new business venture. Now, now, we don't mix business and pleasure. Now, I believe you Americans invented that slogan. Oh, yes, but we don't live by it. It's really quite the opposite. (laughs) That's right, Marla. Well, well, another time, perhaps. Besides, I I think we have all the money we need Uh, now. Derek. Yes? I'm going to have to run along. Can I see you a minute first? Certainly. Now, don't you keep him long. Remember, you're going to tell us the story about the Dutch. Yes. We can go out on the terrace. You're being very mysterious, old boy. Okay, Derek, you can drop it. You're not the crown prince in front of me. This is where you get off. Oh, now, my dear boy, you can't mean that. But I do. I'm fed up, understand? Tired of having you use me as an entree to impose on my friends, to cheat them out of their money. Really, Bob? Can I help it if your friends enjoy my company? They wouldn't if they knew the truth about you. And uh, do they know the truth about you, Bob? About that slight matter of your prison term during your four years of uh, study in England? Never mind. Oh, it's all right. I'm not complaining, you know. After all, if we hadn't been uh, cellmates at dear old Wandsworth... You don't frighten me anymore, Marlowe. I think I do. I've noticed that family reputations are just as important here in America as they are at home. Perhaps. But I'm warning you right now. Stop fattening Mrs. Smith for the kill. She's not putting a cent into any of your deals. On the contrary... I expect she'll insist on investing quite heavily. And if she doesn't, well, perhaps your father could be persuaded to put up a few thousand. My father. If you ever dared to go that far, I'd... You'd what? We'd better understand each other right now, my dear ex me. I'll go as far as I like with anyone I choose to have you introduce me to. And there's nothing you can do about it. Not a thing. <laughs> No, Derek, you're not worried about Bob Leland's threat. Not for an instant. 
the offense that sent him to Wandsworth Prison while he was a student in England was a minor one. Little more than a college prank that backfired. But it did land him in a British prison. And with the importance of his father's position, it gives you the key you need to open wide the doors of society. That's what brought you here to America, isn't it? And living in Bob Leland's home, being accepted by his parents and introduced to his society friends, makes it all so easy. A few more weeks of gaining their confidence and you'll be satisfied to leave Bob alone, to move on out of his life, a much wealthier man than when you arrived. You don't see any more of Bob that evening, and the next day you stroll down to the stables for your afternoon ride. Oh, Mr. Marlowe. Huh? Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> I bet you don't even remember me. Allison Kingsley. Uh, Alice? I knew it. I was um, one of the many people you met at Mrs. Parkford uh, at Smitty's cocktail party yesterday. Uh, Bob introduced us. Oh, yes. Yes, of course, you're his fiancé. Oh, not yet. And I won't be if he doesn't stop standing me up this way. We had a date to go riding. Oh? Well, uh, as an acquaintance of long standing, I can tell you that the only way to handle that habit of his is with a slight kick in the shin. <laughs> and uh, how do you suggest I do that when he isn't here? Simple. You go riding with me. I see. I'll admit it's a temptation. But if he did show up... He'd learn that you were a lady with a mind of your own. All saddled up, Mr. Marlowe. Right. Well, what do you say? I... All right, I'll do it. But, of course, only as a lesson to Bob. Whoa! Whoa, whoa Mike, whoa, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, oh, that was wonderful. You, uh, you ride very well. Thanks. We ought to walk in, though. Cool the horses down. Oh, suits me. You know, Alison, this, this is much better than a cocktail party. I mean, to, to really get to know someone. Oh? You think you know me now? Like a book. You were born in Kansas. You come to the big city with ambitions to become a famous actress. You're a model by profession, awaiting the day when you'll get the big break. Unless Bob Leland talks you into marriage before that happens. Now you're making fun of me. Not at all. I admire you. In fact, I, I wish I could see you again, Alice. Oh, here now, just how hard do you want me to kick Bob Shin? He might not like it if... Oh, Bob, Bob wouldn't mind. Not with me. He's a, I'm the best friend he has. I'm even staying at his home until I return to England. Yes, I know. How, how about dinner, Alice? Perhaps uh, tomorrow evening? Well... I suppose I should convince Bob that I'm not just sitting around waiting for him. Supposing I call you, what? All right, Derek. Call me and we'll see. I warn you, Derek, you'll go too far. Uh, really, old man, can I help it if Allison preferred to go riding with me? I was late. There was a rather important matter I wanted to look into. Then it's your own fault putting business before Alice. No, it wasn't business. As a matter of fact, it concerned you, Derek. Oh? I got to thinking after our conversation last night. I decided to check on something, the little matter of your visa. What about my visa? I thought you'd been here a long time, too long. And I find out to my intense satisfaction that your stay in this country officially expires next week. Oh, yeah? Yes. Well, don't weep any unnecessary tears for me. You see... I won't be leaving quite that soon. No? No. These official matters take time. The immigration authorities are frightfully busy these days. It'll probably be several weeks before they get around to their routine checkup. And by that time, uh, I'll have things quite well in hand. Oh, I see. Except that it might not take weeks if someone called your overstay to their attention. You haven't done that, have you? No. I wouldn't if I were you. And why not? Because if you do, Bob, I'll kill you. you what did you say? I said, I'll kill you. You see, I've been planning this little visit to America for a long time. Ever since our college days together at dear old Wandsworth. And I won't stand by and see my plans destroyed. You really mean that, don't you? Try me, and you'll find out. <laughs>
with the prologue of Small Town Girl. The Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. But now a timely warning. Don't let your 4th of July weekend be spoiled by tire trouble, or even worse, by the kind of an accident that faulty tires can cause. There's still time to replace those smooth, dangerous old tires with new Lee Super Deluxe tires at your signal service station. And when you choose Lee Super Deluxe tires, you're making one of today's best investments in safety and satisfaction. The broader, flatter riding surface of this completely new type tire has extra rubber in it for extra long mileage. And the 16 cleaning edges on the eight rib tread guarantee quicker stopping plus greater non-skid protection. In addition, you'll enjoy easier turning and steering and the way this new type tire absorbs road shocks. Yet you pay no more for a Lee Super Deluxe tire than for ordinary first line brands. And right now, signal dealers are offering special trade-in allowances plus liberal credit terms. So stop by your signal dealers tonight or tomorrow, sure. You'll be surprised how little it'll cost to start off on your 4th of July trip with new 8-rib Lee Super Deluxe tires. And now back to the whistler. makes it a stalemate, doesn't it, Derek? You'll use the fine art of threat with Bob Leland, and now he has a threat of his own. You wonder if he really would go to the immigration authorities, and it worries you, doesn't it? You need time to plant your deal with Mrs. Parkford Smith, time to nurture it and watch it grow. You realize you've got to get the upper hand again to slow Bob down, and then you think of it. Allison. The girl Bob's in love with, the one person he wouldn't want to hurt, wouldn't want to learn about the sentence he served in that British prison. You decide that you can use Alison Kingsley to advantage, and so you press hard to arrange that dinner date, and then another and another, until you can sense that she's becoming quite fond of you, helping even more than you'd counted on. You know something, Derek? I know a lady who's positively captivated by you. Really, Alison? Really? That's a delightful coincidence. You see, I know a man uh, who... Oh, now, wait a minute. The lady I speak of, um, she's Mrs. Parkford Smith. Oh, I thought... No, you didn't. Uh, anyway, I had lunch with Smitty today. Oh, the old girl's really quite fond of you, isn't she? Oh, she's been wonderful. She's, uh, she's sponsor of the little theater group, you know. She's helped me more than I can say. But... That's not what I wanted to talk about. Oh, what then? Derek, why don't you talk to her? Send her the brochures. Let her in on that venture of yours. Whatever it is. You, uh, really think she'd like to invest something? I know it. She practically begged me to say something. And she has confidence in you, Derek. Just as I have. Allison, you're... You're a very fine person. If... If I thought for a moment there was a chance... Derek... No, Don't spoil no, 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 I, I mean it. You'll, you'll be sailing off to England as soon as you've wound up your business here. I've known that all along. You'd never let yourself think seriously about a, about an American girl. But why not? Why not, Alison? We get along so beautifully. We... But it would tie you down, Derek. Perhaps keep you here in this country. Oh, keep me in this country, but why? Why yes, yes, it, it might do that. Allison. Yes, Derek. There's a moon tonight. What do you say if we if we get into the car and have it drive down by the sea? Do you really want to? Yes, I do want to. Very much. Well, here we are. Right back to your front door, safe and sound. <laughs> Had fun? Oh, it's been a perfect evening, Derek. I'll see you up here. Uh, no, I'm afraid we disturbed my roommate. She goes to bed quite early. Roommates? I, I didn't know you, you shared your apartment with anyone. Oh, yes. Emma Shoup, a girl from my hometown. You've never looked at the mailbox. Emma Shoup, Alison Kingsley. Yes, 
We've shared an apartment ever since I arrived in New York. Well, uh, do you think your friend Miss Shoup would mind so much? You know, you've never once asked me in. I'm afraid she would. Emma's a small-town girl. She's wonderful, actually, but uh, she doesn't approve of some of my boyfriends, especially when they keep me out this late. Oh, I, I see. The ogre guarding the beautiful princess, is that it? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> well, perhaps I'll eventually get on her good side and charm her into submission. <laughs> perhaps. Well, anyway, it's pretty late tonight. Good night, Derek. And thanks again. Not at all. You know, Alison, I hope we can have many more evenings together. Derek, sometimes I don't know whether to believe you or not. I'd like to be sure, but... You, you can be. You could depend on me, Alison. I mean what I say. <laughs> You are sincere now, aren't you, Derek? And when Allison mentioned that marriage might keep you in this country, she gave you an idea. Yes, it's the answer to your problem. A wedding might not ensure permanent residence in America, but at least there'd be a long delay. Enough time to feather your nest beautifully before returning to England. So the next morning you call Mrs. Parkford Smith, arranged to send her the brochures. And you're delighted when she offers to invest $75,000 with you. However, there'll be a short delay, a matter of a week or so before you can get the money. So there's nothing to do but wait. The days drag by slowly. And on the morning of the third day, as you're about to leave the house, you run into Bob downstairs. Morning, Derek. Going out again? Oh, Bob. Uh, how's the stranger? Where have you been keeping yourself these days? I've been around here. It's been rather pleasant having the place to myself for a change. You've been quite busy, haven't you, Derek? Quite. Oh, by the way, there's a letter for you. There on the hall table. A letter? Oh. oh. I wonder who could... It's... It's from the immigration office. Yes. The immigration office. Mr. Derek Marlowe. Care of Mr. Robert Leland, 1822 Oakdale Road. Dear Mr. Marlowe, this is to inform you that as of midnight, July the 2nd, your passport and necessary documents covering entry into the United States will have expired and... You did this! You notified them! I didn't do anything at all, Derek. I'm sure they have routine ways of checking you such... You want me out of this country! Really? How can you say that, old chap? And not just because of your friends. That isn't all you're afraid of, is it, Bob? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. If you don't, you're the only one who hasn't noticed. All right, Bob. You asked for this. I haven't asked for anything, and I didn't set up the immigration laws. You have to get out legally. Could I have caused that? Perhaps. Perhaps not. But you think you won, don't you? Because this letter gives me only a few days more. Well, we'll see about that, Bob. Perhaps I have a surprise for you. A big surprise. <laughs> There's still a chance, Derek, to stay with your scheme, to get your hands on Mrs. Parkford Smith's $75,000. Only you'll have to propose to Allison a little sooner. You hope Allison won't think you're rushing things as you hurry to her apartment, anxious to have everything settled before the immigration authorities pay a call. Yes? Oh, Derek. I... I had to see you, Alison. I, I couldn't stay away. May, may I come in? But, Derek... I know, Emma Shoup. But you just have to let me explain. I, I must talk to you, Emma or no Emma. I'm afraid you won't be bothered with Emma anymore, Derek. What? You don't mean that she, she's leaving? Yes. Emma's leaving. Just like that? Just like that. You, uh, quarreled, did you? Yes. You can call it a quarrel. May I come in? If you wish. So, dear old Emma's moving out. Going back to the small town, is she? Yes. She's going back where she belongs. She's packed and ready to take the train for home. In another 15 minutes, she'll be pulling out of Pennsylvania Station. Well, I can't say I'm sorry. No. I don't suppose you would be, Derek. Look here, darling. I didn't come here to discuss Emma Shoup. Alison. The reason I had to see you rushed over here like this, I, I... Well, it's something I've got to ask you. Right away. Oh? 
Allison, the other night, uh, what you said about my staying in this country. Well, I, 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 I've decided I like it here. I like it very much. I see. Do you know why? I haven't the faintest idea. Allison, darling, you're not making this any easier for me, but I love you. I want you to be my wife. I, I want you to marry me. I... <laughs> marry you? <laughs> Why are you laughing? You don't love me. You never have. You've been using me to, to get to Smitty, to, to strike at Bob in some way. I don't know what it is, but Bob's in some sort of trouble, isn't he? And you know about it. No, 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 that isn't it, Alice. I... Don't tell me you're his best friend or anyone's. Alice! You see, Derek, Mrs. Smith wasn't quite as gullible as you assumed. Those brochures you sent her, the entire proposition. She had her attorneys check it thoroughly. They also checked on you. She called me about it. Oh. What are you going to do? I've already done it. You'll have a visitor any day now, Mr. Derek Marlowe. From the immigration office. I've told them all about you. You? You told them? The moment I found out, yes. You... You made a fool of me. An absolute fool. What's the matter, Derek? Can't you take a bit of your own... Derek. Derek, what are you going to do? You made a fool out of me. It happened swiftly, Derek. A few wild, unreasoning moments, and then you're standing over her, trembling, terrified at the realization that you've killed her. And just as suddenly you know that you've got to find a way out. This is far more than attempted fraud, isn't it, Derek? It can mean your life. And then as you stand there, forcing yourself to think, something comes back to you. Your conversation with Allison when you first arrived at the apartment. Emma's leaving. You, uh, quarreled, did you? Yes, you can call it a quarrel. She's going back home. In another 15 minutes, she'll be pulling out of Pennsylvania Station. Yes, Derek. Whether there actually was a quarrel or not, it's your only out. And you're certain that you can make it seem that way. You slip out of the apartment quietly, leave the building without being seen. Twenty minutes later, you're back and on your way to Allison's apartment with the house manager. Terribly sorry to bother you like this, Mrs. Fremont, but when Miss Kingsley didn't answer my ring... You say you heard someone in there with her a while ago. Uh, yes, they, they, they seem to be quarreling. Oh, any idea who it was? Well, I, I, I'd rather not say. Well, we'd better talk to her. Mm. Perhaps I'd better wait for you. All right. She might be laying down. I'll just... <gasps> Mr. Marlowe. Mr. Marlowe. Yes? What is it? Oh. oh. Good Lord. She's dead. The poor thing's dead. Somebody's killed her. Uh, don't, don't get excited, Mrs. Fremont. Oh. And don't touch anything. We've got to call the police right away. The police, yes. And when they get here, I may be able to help. I, I'm quite sure I know who did this. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, since next Monday, July 4th, you'll be celebrating the 172nd birthday of independence for America. It's interesting to note that since the war, there has been a tremendous rebirth of that independent spirit as more and more veterans go into business for themselves. That's particularly gratifying to us at Signal because since the very beginning, Signal products have been sold only through independent dealers. At first, there were just a handful of them in Southern California, but drivers liked Signal products and services so well that the Signal family grew and grew. Until today, there are almost 2,000 Signal stations serving six western states from Canada to Mexico. Now, obviously, there must be good reasons why so many drivers have switched to Signal. To discover them for yourself, stop by your nearby Signal station before the 4th of July weekend and fill up with Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. You'll like it. And at independent signal stations, you'll see a fine example of the American way of doing business that has made and kept our land such a great place in which to live and make a living. And now back to the Whistler.
It's working perfectly so far, isn't it, Derek? The police had very little to ask in the preliminary investigation. And at headquarters, waiting outside Lieutenant Anderson's office, you have plenty of time to go over and over the story in your mind. Exactly what you must tell them. Yes, Derek, you have all the answers. And you had no trouble giving them convincingly when the routine questioning began. And, well, that's all there is to it, Lieutenant. You can understand how shocked I was when Mrs. Fremont called me in and I, I saw poor Alice. Yeah, sure, we know about that. Now let's see if I've got this straight. You went to the apartment the first time and heard her arguing with a roommate. Could you tell what the argument was about? Well, yes, that, that's why I didn't ring. I didn't want to embarrass Allison. They were quarreling over... Uh, over me. <clears throat> oh, I see. Allison and I were going to be married. Her roommate, Emma Shoup, felt that she wasn't being fair to Bob Leland. Leland, eh? Sergeant, you might as well bring him in here now. Yes, sir. Leland, in here. Lieutenant, I... Oh. Oh, so they finally caught up with you, did they, Derek? I'm afraid that's a bit of wishful thinking, Leland. And out of place, as usual. Never well, mind you two. Save it. Sit down. If you don't mind, Lieutenant, I hate to sit here chatting with, with him. After all, the girl I was in love with has been murdered. And you're not doing anything... Oh, yes, we are, Marlowe. The railroads will be checked, the airports and bus stations. We'll get this Emma Shoup in plenty of time. Yeah. Emma Shoup? Wait a minute. What about Emma Shoup? Just before Miss Kingsley was murdered, Marlowe here went to her apartment. Heard the two of them arguing. Arguing? Allison and... And Emma Shoup. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Sorry to disappoint you, old man, but what they had to say to each other was pretty violent. You, uh, you told the lieutenant that. It happens to be the truth, Leland. <laughs> is it, Derek? And this is one time when you've stretched the truth too far. There wasn't any argument, lieutenant. There couldn't have been. No? And why not? Well, I guess it was the sort of thing only a small-town girl would do. But when Emma Shoup first came out here from Kansas, she stumbled on a simple trick to protect herself from phonies like you, Derek. She put two names on her mailbox. Her real name, Emma Shoup, and the name she hoped to make famous. Allison Kingsley. That's right, Lieutenant. Emma Shoup and Allison Kingsley were two names for the same girl. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Paul Cavanaugh and Lorette Philbrandt. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Leslie Edgeley and music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember next Wednesday at the same time another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>